Week of Trinity 12, Tuesday, The Son's Rescue and the Father's Uprooting. You love all devouring words, O oh, you deceitful tongue, but God will destroy you forever. He will take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. Psalm 52, verse 5. Dear Redeemed, David is the preacher of Psalm 52, and the intended recipient of the first seven verses is Dog the Edomite, a wicked traitor and murderer of 85 members of a faithful priest's family. The priest was the man who had given the holy bread to David and his hungry men. According to his time, will, and purpose, two of the acts that the Lord will accomplish are 1. The rescue of the faithful children of God who trust in the Son of God, and 2. The uprooting and removal of all others, especially the manifestly wicked who inflict evil on the church, the body of Christ. But answering, Jesus said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. If the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Matthew 15, verses 13 and 14. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 7, verse 16. Jesus is declaring that the Pharisees, in the hardness of their hearts and in the continued teaching of salvation by the law of man, are falling into the ditch of eternal destruction. Anyone who follows these spiritually blind religious leaders will also fall. The Pharisees, along with the leaders of all other religions, have constructed spiritual systems that are not rooted in the Word of God. These religions of works are not of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they will be uprooted. One would think that those who are Christians would not fall to such spiritual schemes. It is not so. One would think that those who hear the Word of God with the ears of their souls believe in their hearts that the Son of God died for their sins and confess with their mouths that Christ is risen, would never give up such certain salvation. Alas, it is not so. The temptations of the devil, the world, and the flesh are often so subtle, so beautiful, and so appealing to the old Adam residing within each one of us that souls are seduced. It may be the perverted logic that, since Jesus died for all sins, therefore I can sin all I want. Or it may be the appealing ten steps or laws to being a better Christian, or the coercive payments of time and treasure to ensure entry into heaven for yourself or for a loved one. Dear Redeemed, do not be deceived. Any doctrine not of Christ will be uprooted. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4 verse 12. The Pharisees have departed for a moment, and Jesus says to his disciples then, as well as to his followers now, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Prayer Lord Jesus, I thank you for all your blessings and benefits that you provide for me in this life. O Lord, do not remove these from me, but grant that I may remain rooted in you. Preserve me from covetousness and all sins which originate from my wicked heart. Grant that I may be a planting of the Father, and therefore sustained in the faith, with faith, toward you. Please give me ears to hear your word, and strength to make applications as I need. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. Amen. Hymn number 552, stanzas 5 and 6. O Jesus, who my debt didst pay, and for my sin was smitten, within the book of life, O may, my name be also written. I will not doubt, I trust in thee. From Satan thou hast set me free, and from all condemnation. Therefore my intercessor be, and for thy bloody merit, declare my name from judgment free, with all who life inherit. 
that I may see thee face to face with all thy saints in that blessed place which thou for us hast purchased.